representing Carolinians since 1992. Live from Charlotte, this is WBTV News on your side. The price of your fall festivities is on the rise this year. We're live and on your side with the reason farmers say they're in a rough spot. And the lingering damage from Hurricane Ian on the Carolina coast. The reason contractors say the hurricane has caused a domino effect on their business. We're starting tonight by following a developing story out of Raleigh. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Liliana Pearson. Authorities are still not disclosing the motive for the shooting rampage. Police say a 15 year old teen went on Thursday that left five people dead, including the alleged shooter's brother and an off duty police officer. The Wake County District Attorney announced plans to pursue charging the teen suspect as an adult, but did not specify the charges he would be facing. This would have been different if, if uh, this young man, for whatever reason, um, did not have access to these weapons. Vice President Kamala Harris tweeted about the tragedy, urging Congress to pass an assault weapon ban after his arrest. The teenage suspect was hospitalized in critical condition from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. New at 11, we now know a fight that broke out at the Olympic High School football game Friday night, bringing a large police presence to the school resulted in arrests. CMS officials told us more than 15 people were involved in the fight. At the end of the night, officials say one juvenile was arrested and a 19 year old was released from custody. Viewer video shows a line of police cars at the school as officers worked to break up the fight. CMS says the fight started at the bleachers in the home section and spilled onto the track surrounding the football field. New at 11, you can feel it in the air. It's the season for apple picking, pumpkin patches, and all of your favorite fall activities that we love here at our local farms. But the pumpkins that you're taking home, or maybe that hayride that you're going to take, it might be a bit pricier this year. Our Nikki Hauser talked with farmers about how high prices are still a problem. Nikki? Right, Liliana, it's the same issues we all have. The price of gas, food, equipment, that's hitting our farms as well. And it's the same culprits, inflation and supply chain issues lingering from the pandemic that are largely to blame. They say there's nothing like North Carolina in the fall. And while the appeal of crisp weather and pumpkin picking is something Nancy Anderson can rely on, the price to keep her farm going is not. The price of straw <laughs> went from $4 a bale to $7 a bale. She says since the pandemic started, everything's a top-notch expense, including the straw that these guys are sitting on, the hay that this one is munching on, plus feed, fertilizer, and fuel. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says in a September economic report, though farm income should be higher now than in the two years prior, spending is still on the rise. Oh, it's, it's not easy. It's, uh, we'll see how it is at the bottom line. Which means you could be paying more for your fall festivities. Okay, prices went up slightly, but not much. We're trying to hold that steady for our customer because we realize that they're, you know, hitting the pocketbook as well. With farmers feeling the pinch nationwide, Hunter Farm and Kerrigan Farms say they can still pay employees a fair wage and keep costs down for visitors. Our community has been very supportive of us. I mean, look at all these nice people out here. So you can keep your visit on the calendar <laughs> without falling behind. Now, in May of this year, the White House doubled investment in domestic fertilization production from $250 million to $500 million to lower those costs and offset this issue. Liliana. Nikki, thank you. And talking about fall, downtown Monroe is getting into the Halloween spirit just a little bit early. Today, city leaders hosted their an annual Halloween happenings event. There was plenty of family fun activities for people of all ages to enjoy, like face painting, a petting zoo, and a costume competition. Some people say they came out for a tastier reason to attend the first ever turkey barbecue competition. 
Now we want to turn our attention to the weather this evening as we're seeing temperatures fall a bit after what was a beautiful Saturday. Meteorologist Alicia Wilson is with us now. Alicia, how do we think that things are going to shape up for Sunday? Well, we're looking pretty good for Sunday, at least throughout the day we are. After a temperature climbing to 79 today, we are going to be seeing temperatures not as cool as they started out this morning. Already seeing that as the temperatures are running about 7 to, in some cases, over 10 degrees warmer than they were around this time last night. So we're going to be in store more for some 50s during the overnight hours than 40s and the 30s that we saw like this morning. It's 62 currently in Charlotte. It's going to be those southwesterly winds that keep the temperatures up tonight, sitting at 55 in Wilkesboro is 51 in Boone. Still looking at some lower 60s across the upstate of South Carolina during the overnight hours. Mainly going to be dealing with some passing clouds and you see how the temperatures will stay a bit warmer than they were last night. Now as we go throughout the day on Sunday, we're not going to see any rainfall, so we'll be all clear on the first alert Doppler radar just like we are right now, but it's late tomorrow evening that our rain chances will start to increase, but before that we're going to be in store for a warm day with highs back into the upper 70s and the lower 80s, but we've got a major cool down on the way. I'll show you more on that coming up in the look at your seven day forecast. Liliana. Alicia, thank you. New at 11, while Hurricane Ian is gone, the damage it left behind is still seen across the Carolina coast, including docks that either floated away or were battered by the storm. Now that damage is stopping contractors from completing the projects they already had scheduled. Damaged, destroyed, and floating away. Docks like these are what Bob Strickland with Sea Spray Homes are now repairing. We're, we're focusing right now on trying to get those back uh, rebuilt for the homeowners. He says repairing any kind of hurricane related damage can take several weeks. You gotta, you gotta tear it out, let it dry, you know, re insulate, re shoot rot, repaint, re trim, new flooring. And depending on the project, permits may be required, which can take weeks to get, not to mention supply chain issues. All this has caused Bob's business to push back projects scheduled before the hurricane. We're trying to balance you know, what, we, what we were committed to prior to the storm in addition to you know, the, the, uh, the damage from the hurricane. So we're um, you know, trying to balance everything, which is, is, is it's become a challenge. Polly's Island Realty contracts Strickland's business to fix some of their 81 homes that have docks. The property manager tells me some of these docks aren't covered by insurance, which means property owners are left to pay for these repairs out of pocket. If the dock, from my understanding, is connected to the residential house, it's covered because it's, cut, it's um, connected to the structure of the insured building. But the creek docks that are across the road, they are not covered by insurance. So, and, and you're talking thousands. Bob says on average, creek dock work can range anywhere from twenty to one hundred thousand dollars, depending on the damage and the length. While business may be booming, Bob says after more than forty years in business, they'll get through it. It could be stressful, but you know, we have a good team of people who work together, and we've done it before, so. He said that he's hired seven people in just the past few weeks to help them with these projects, adding that they work on 10 to 15 projects a day. He's hoping that the extra hands will help them finish the Hurricane Ian projects quickly so they can get back on schedule. Today, there was a big family reunion in the Queen City. Organizers of the Black Family Reunion say the goal was to help reunite the community by inviting everybody out to a cookout. Today's festivities were held at Movement School on Freedom Drive. You can see there just how many people came out to enjoy today's activities, the music, the food. Community members also marched against domestic violence and celebrated atonement. New homeowners complain their contractor won't fix glaring construction issues. Our investigation finds the contractor isn't who the homeowners thought it was. And we're tracking our next cold front that's going to be headed our way as early as tomorrow night and especially going into Monday. It's going to bring some of the coldest temperatures of the season so far. I'll show you how cold coming up.